nice. The new Super Mario Bros. DS was a breath of fresh air when it came out back in 2006. And in pretty much all of the ads and TV promos, the Mega Mushroom was shown all the time. Look how big Mario gets. Wow. But you know what they say? Size doesn't matter. Which is why today we are going to stay as far as we can from the Mega Mushroom and instead we're going to rely on the Mini Mushroom. Can we beat the entire game in that form though? The rules are simple. We are going to be playing all 8 worlds in New Super Mario Bros on the Nintendo DS and we are going to try to remain Mini Mario at all times. This means we are not allowed to collect any power up that could make us bigger like a mushroom or a fire flower. While in the Mini Mario form, everything basically kills us in one hit, so we'll have to be super careful. Defeating enemies is more difficult, as we cannot simply jump on them anymore, instead we have to do a ground pound attack. The gravity also changes as Mini Mario, making you more floatier and allowing you to jump higher. Getting a mini mushroom is not possible from the very start, but you can easily get one in World 1-4 in that block there. So feel free to go back there to get more if you end up dying. Now that everything has been set, let's see if we can beat this game as mini Mario only. Here we go. World 1-1 is a very easy level, and it is expected as it's the very first level in the game. This will allow you to get used to the new gravity and abilities, and you can always dodge coins while you're at it. 1-2 hm. is an easy underground stage featuring a couple of tight spaces, but as Mini Mario, it's easy to fit anywhere you want to. Keep dodging the plants, Koopas and Goombas, and you'll reach the end in no time. 1-3 contains a lot of spinning mushroom platforms, but it also introduces those springs that can make you float super high, and as you come down, Mario is going to slowly fall down, which is kinda cool. Watch for your jumps on the moving mushroom platforms and you'll be good. 1- Tower does contain a whole lot of moving blocks, and you'll want to watch out to avoid getting crushed in between those. Once you're at the top of the tower, you'll fight Bowser Jr. for the first time. This dude is a total joke. Just do a ground pound attack on his head three times and he'll be a goner. 1-4 is a very easy level and remember that it is your go-to level if you need more mini mushrooms. 1-5 contains lots of those bouncing pink mushrooms. These things make you bounce super high and this allows you to avoid touching most enemies on your path by being off screen. 1-Dash Castle is up and this stage does contain lava beneath you at all times but there's always a floor, a block or a rope that you can walk on. Just time your jumps to avoid getting game ended by the many things on your path and you'll soon reach Bowser. And defeating him is really easy. All you gotta do is hop on that floating platform and then jump on the switch over there and you did it. We have defeated Bowser and saved Princess Peach. No, actually we haven't, okay? This was only World 1. 2-1 contains lots of pokies and these spiky dudes must be avoided at all cost. Thankfully, the low gravity from being Mini Mario actually helps out a lot while jumping above them all. 2-2 is home of our best friend Lakitu and he's back at it again with the spiny throws. You'll have to be careful and avoid all of the things he throws at you and you'll be okay. 2-3 is a level that takes place in the sewer. This level features lots of one-way doors that you need to go through to reach the end. And along the way, there's going to be a lot of evil plants to dodge, but you know, nothing that will stop you on this quest. 2-4 is a very generic level. It contains lots of Koopas, Goombas and plants, but there's not much to say about it, it's kind of easy actually. 2- Tower is one tall tower, let me tell you. You'll be climbing this one for a long time. You'll be moving on elevators, hanging on ropes, doing wall jumps, jumping on spinning blocks to make your way to the top. And once you reach Junior, well, well, the fight is going to be the same actually. Ground pound his face a couple of times and he's gonna run away like a pansy. Your biggest enemy in 2-5 is actually the music. Yeah, this level is actually filled with those fake block enemies and those dudes only move when there's a PAW in the song. 
So make sure to memorize the song if you want to make it to the end without a scratch. 2-6 takes place on a floating platform. There are going to be other platforms bringing in plants on your platform to restrict your moves. And this is quite annoying. I actually felt intimidated by that big big plant, not gonna lie. 2 Dash Castle contains lots of spiky balls that kill you in one hit, so watch out. You'll have to jump above those many times throughout the castle, but eventually you'll reach the boss, Mummy Pokey. And defeating her is not very tough, just aim for her head and do 3 ground pounds and you'll be good. Now typically, defeating a boss as Mini Mario allows you to skip World 3 and go directly to World 4, but I feel like we should play all of the world anyways, so let's check out World 3 first. 3-1 is our first underwater stage in the game, yay! <laughs> The first part is pretty easy, containing a couple of cheap cheeps, but most of them are not even on your path. The next part does contain this hungry purple fish that seems to be really interested in having a Mario sandwich. Quickly swim to the end of the stage. 3-2 is full of tilting mushroom platforms and many flying Koopa Troopas. And while it is kinda scary at first, remain calm and you'll be this level quickly. 3 Dash Tower does contain lots of fences you have to climb on to make your way to the top. A lot of those fences contain obstacles like Koopas or those electric ball enemies. Just avoid touching them and you'll soon reach the top. Oh hey, it's Bowser Jr. and he doesn't have any new moves. Alright, see ya! 3-3 is another underwater level. There is not a big fish in this one, but there's even worse, bloopers. Ugh. These dudes move so fast and they scare me so much. Avoid them and you'll soon reach the pipe that leads to the end. Whew. 3 Dash Ghost House is up, and in this one, you need to hit some switches to turn these slopes into stairs. Because of the low gravity jumping mechanic, well sometimes you'll just barely reach the top on time before the stairs disappear, so watch out for that. 3 Dash Castle is next, and there's gonna be lots of skewers in this one. You really have to watch out as you make your way to the right, as timing is key to avoid turning into a kebab. This final part is particularly spooky but you still have more than enough time to make it out alive. The boss is this ugly fish dude and 3 ground pound attacks will do the trick just fine. 4-1 introduces us to those lovely spider enemies. They're not very threatening though, just bounce on them and you'll be good. You'll soon reach our friend Dory, and while she is cool, well as Mini Mario we don't actually need to wait for her. We can just bounce from one enemy to another and we'll soon reach the end. 4-2 is full of those purple tilting mushrooms, just watch out to not fall down and that's it. 4-3 is a noto scroller underwater stage with a couple of giant eels that want to eat you alive. They are very scary, I mean look at them! Just avoid them at all costs and you'll reach the end. 4 Dash Tower has some lava that rises underneath you, so no time to waste in here. Watch out for the moving blocks, spikes and other hazards on your way and you'll soon reach Bowser Jr. The kid's got some new moves. You can't simply ground pound him anymore because he's hiding in his spiky shell. You now have to wait for him to throw some Cooper shells to then ground pound them and kick them back in his face. This is actually really tricky to do as Mini Mario because instead of just jumping on the shell, you have to do a ground pound and the timing is really tricky. After some practice, you'll figure out how to do it right and this fight will be done. 4-4 is filled with wigglers and you'll need to bounce on them to reach the end. 4 Dash Ghost House is an easy stage if you know where to go, because it is actually full of le epic troll doors that bring you backwards. Ugh, I don't like ghost houses. 4 Dash 5 will force you to ground pound some bombs to dig a path through the blocks. Avoid the spinies falling from the ceiling to reach the end. 4 Dash 6 is another level with Dory, but this time around, well, we won't be able to skip using her. Just remain on Dory's back and avoid the enemies on the way to make your way to the flagpole. 4 Dash Castle is full of swinging pendulum platforms. Thankfully, the low gravity jumps of Mini Mario will make this castle a cakewalk. The boss is a huge Goomba, 
and to defeat him, you need to do some ground pound attacks. The thing is, since you are mini Mario, your attacks are less effective, so it felt like it took a million hits to defeat this dude. I mean, come on, just die already, bruh. 5-1 is home of those lovely snow fishy boopkin enemies. Aw, oh, they're so cute! Watch out for those big piles of snow falling down from the trees, because if they fall down on poor mini Mario, well, he'll be left defenseless and will probably get killed by a Goomba or something. 5-2 is a pretty easy stage. It does contain a lot of spike tops that you'll need to dodge, but that's about it. 5- Tower takes place on an elevator slowly moving up to the top. A lot of spiky balls will start rolling on it and you'll have to dodge them all. Since these things kill you in one hit, well this stage quickly becomes terrifying, but don't panic and you'll eventually reach the boss, who's super easy as usual. 5-3 is actually quite easy and really fast to clear, because there's a mini pipe hiding down there that makes you skip almost the entire stage. Just jump to the flagpole and you'll be done. 5-Ghost House wants you to move up those stairs while avoiding the angry bruisers that will try to punch you to death. Thankfully, these dudes are slow as heck and are pretty easy to dodge. 5-4 is a slow auto-scrolling level featuring those fun mushrooms that go up or down when you're touching them. Avoid the evil bullet bills along the way to make it to the end alive. 5 Dash Castle is filled with conveyor belts and there are lots of piranha plants on those, so watch out and wait for them to fall down before jumping and you'll soon reach the bus, Pity Piranha. Wait for this dude to slam his face on the floor and do a couple of ground pound attacks and you'll be done. 6-1 is a level that does contain a lot of bullet bills, but you can easily bounce your way to the end. 6-2 is a stage where the water level keeps moving up and down. Thankfully, we can run on water as Mini Mario, making this stage a total joke. 6- Tower is a very scary level that contains skewers coming from the side walls. Timing and planning your moves and jumps will be super important if you want to make it out alive. This part here, where you have to move up and dodge skewers, is really tricky and scary as Mini Mario, but it is possible. Ground Pound my boy Junior three times to clear this stage. 6-3 is a very interesting level because it contains two types of blocks that I think never made a comeback in any other games. First off, these ones on the wires that keep shaking left and right, and then those red ones with spikes on one side that force you to time your jumps if you want to collect what's inside. Can we get those blocks in Super Mario Maker 2 in the next update, Nintendo? Please? 6-4 is full of ledges on which you move or hang on to while dodging lots of fireballs. This is a scary level, but it's pretty cool. 6- Tower number 2 starts off with lots of conveyor belts you have to walk on to make your way up. You'll eventually reach this wonderful, lay epic troll pipe that shoots you back down after you made some progress going up. Wow, so funny Nintendo, Pfft, what a prank. For some reason, at one point, I managed to squeeze through two conveyor belts. <laughs> Weird glitch. But then again, they call him Mini Mario for a reason. Bowser Jr. is actually putting up a real fight, as timing your ground pounds on the Koopa shells on this moving platform is really difficult. I managed to do it eventually after lots of failed attempts. 6-5 is another underwater stage and this one contains those water tornadoes that will try to pull you down and drown you. Avoid them because if you touch them, it really sucks you down. <laughs> Get it? <sighs> In 6-6, -6, you'll be moving up by jumping on those springs and using those pipe cannons. It is a fun yet short level. 6- Castle will ask you to time your jumps on those moving blocks if you don't want to fall down in the lava and die. But that's all about it. The bus is super easy to beat. Just wait for the mole to show its head and do a ground pound attack and voila! 7-1 is a level where you'll be riding some platforms on rails until you get to the end. It is actually a very simple stage. 7- Ghost House has 5 different doors to choose from. It's kind of a maze at first and you'll get lost, but eventually you'll reach the end. In World 7-2, you are meant to hop aboard this lift and slowly move to the top. 
But here's a bonus challenge for us. Is it possible to make it to the top without using this leaf? Well, at first, it is. There are lots of Koopas and you can bounce super high using them. It is actually possible to get to the very end of the stage, but this final part has too many Koopas on the way, so it doesn't seem like it's possible to clear that final jump. What a shame. Let's just do it the intended boring way then. 7-3 takes place on top of a giant wiggler. Just ride it to the end while dodging all of the enemies and you'll be good. 7 tower should be called the Tower of Timing, as you'll need to make sure to have the proper timing for all of your moves if you don't want to end up being crushed by those moving blocks. Timing is going to be key during the fight against Bowser Jr. as well, as you have to shoot back his Koopa shell, and with the floor moving left and right all the time, well timing is quite difficult. 7-4 features tons of bouncing mushrooms and springs, and you'll be using those to make your way to the top and clear the stage. 7-5 contains lots of bullet bills and bombs. bounce your way to the end and you'll be okay. 7-6 has lots of Koopa Troopas, and you'll need to go in between all of them to get to the end. Sadly, you need to use a secret exit to make your way to world 7-7, and the way to do so is to hit that block to make this vine go up in the sky. The thing is, we have to break this block for it to do so, and we cannot break it as mini Mario, and thus reaching the sky becomes impossible. Is this the end of this quest? Well, not really, as we can go back in world 7-4 and use the secret exit located on the top left part of the stage. Using this, we'll be able to make our way to the castle. Yay! 7 Castle is a pretty easy stage. Basically, hop aboard the snake block and move with it until you reach the end. That's all there is to this level, really. Defeat Lucky Thunder by waiting for him to come down to attack you, and when he does that, just do a ground pound attack on his head. Easy. 8-1 starts off with those annoying crow's enemies. These bad birds fly to the right to then come back and fly at you at high speed. They are super annoying to deal with. Take your time and see where they fly and you'll be okay. 8-2 is filled with those weird enemies that drop underwater mines at you. Avoid them and you'll soon reach the end. 8 Dash Tower is kind of easy, as the main gimmick is the fact that there's a lot of moving platforms. Thankfully, the low gravity of Mini Mario actually makes it way easier. My Boy Jr. is pretty dumb, as he can actually hurt himself with his own Koopa shell by throwing it on the wall. Pfft, what a dumb dumb. 8 Dash 3 takes place in a cave underwater. Keep using the pipe that boosts your speed to avoid getting eaten by the giant evil eel. And you'll be okay. 8-4 features those spider enemies from before, except now they appear in front of you out of nowhere. This prevents you from running and makes this stage super slow and really tedious. I died many times during my playthrough because I actually wanted to go faster. Just be patient and you'll be rewarded. 8 Dash Castle is not very difficult, just move on the many platforms and swing on the ropes to get to the end and you will reach Dry Bowser. Just like World 1 Castle's boss, just wall jump your way above this dude and hit the switch to defeat him. Super easy. 8-5 takes place in a cave and there's gonna be lots of lava bubbles coming out of the lava. There are also some platforms that tilt and fall down when you jump on them, so don't waste any time. 8-6 makes you climb to the top of this cave, and this won't be too difficult if you time your jumps right. Just know that lava is rising underneath you, so be quick to jump and make it alive. 8-7 contains all sorts of bros. Fire bros, boomerang bros, THICK hammer bros. All of these dudes can kill you with a single hit, so be extra careful while dealing with them. 8-8 is pretty scary, as there are tons of hot lava boulders falling down from the sky. Plus, there are those bomb enemies that get ignited and start running super fast when they get touched by the boulders. You'll absolutely have to stay in the bottom part of the screen if you don't want to get hit by a boulder. 8- Tower number 2 is a snake block tower once more. Ride the snake block while dodging the fire poles, the rolling spiky balls, and all of the other spikes and hazards, and you'll reach Bowser Jr. Kick back his shells, ground pound his belly, 
and you'll be done. 8-Bowser is finally up and this final castle is really cool having upside down doors that you can only reach after hitting switches and tilting the entire castle upside down. The final boss is Bowser and Bowser Jr all at once. To defeat the dynamic duo as Mini Mario, I suggest sending one of Bowser Jr's shell back at him and then use a ground pound attack to jump above Bowser and hit that switch for an EPIC, Epic GAMER, Gamer double, DOUBLE KILL ACTION! And there we go, they are both gone and the princess is finally saved. So is it possible to beat new Super Mario Bros DS as Mini Mario? Yes, it is. It is not the easiest challenge ever, but it's not really that difficult. With lots of patience and practice, you'll be able to do it. New Super Mario Bros Wii is not the hardest game in the series. In fact, apart from a couple of levels that will be really tedious, most levels can be beaten without losing that many lives. But what if we try to make our life harder? What if we try to beat the entire game as Mini Mario? Yeah, the Mini Mushroom is a power-up that makes Mario super tiny, allowing him to enter smaller pipes. Usually you get a mushroom, you enter the pipe, you collect the coin and then you go back to a normal, more traditional power up. But what if we actually did not do that? The rules are simple. We are going to try to be playing the entire new Super Mario Bros Wii game playing as Mini Mario only. This means that we will not be able to collect any other power up, like mushrooms, fire flowers, propeller suits and so on. Being Mini Mario also changes the gravity a little bit for you and makes you floatier. Mini Mario is not as heavy as Mario, so if you try to jump on an enemy, you'll just bounce on top of his head. You'll actually have to do ground pounds if you want to inflict damage to enemies. Now that everything has been set, let's see if we can beat new Super Mario Bros Wii as Mini Mario. 1-1 is a pretty easy level to start off this quest with. Basically, there's not a lot of enemies or anything that stands between you and the flagpole, so no worries. 1-2 does contain a couple more enemies and it does include annoying plants coming out of the pipes, but you can easily avoid them. Watch out for the Hammer Bros in 1-3, as these guys can literally one-hit kill you. Wait for the perfect timing and make your way across to reach the end of the level. 1-Dash Tower doesn't feature too many enemies on your way. In fact, I think that this tower is actually made easier by being Mini Mario, as you're very floaty and have plenty of time to land on those spinning pendulums. And here I was thinking Mini Mario was going to make this quest more difficult. To defeat Larry, you'll need to make some ground pound attacks, as simply jumping on his head will not do the trick. The timing is a little bit more tricky that way, but not that much. 1-4 gives us our first taste of underwater levels as Mini Mario, and let me tell you that it's actually way more fun that way. First off, you're so tiny that avoiding cheap cheeps is way easier. And second, some parts of the levels allow you to go above the water, and as Mini Mario, you can actually walk on water. Oh, that's so cool! This allows you to speedrun an underwater stage. Epic! 1-5 features those spinning square platforms and walking on them as Mini Mario is quite weird. I had this really weird death here where I just couldn't wall jump on the square no matter what. My tip here is to avoid those square platforms at all time if you can. 1-6 features those spinning wheel platforms and the physics on those just work right. Yes, circles are better than squares, I knew it! 1-Castle has lots of spinning gears and as Mini Mario, there's more than enough space to fit in between those, so once again, it actually makes the level easier. The boss is pretty much the exact same thing as 1-Dash Tower, so you know, you'll beat it in no time. 2-1 starts off with the sand geysers, and let me tell you that those things send you flying into outer space as Mini Mario. Woo! <laughs> That's so cool! 
Keep using those geysers to fly super high and this level will be a piece of cake. 2-2 features two dangerous parts. There's this first one here with the red Koopas on the moving elevator platforms. You'd want to be super careful while bouncing on them. And then there's also this second part with those annoying spike dudes. Since you're floaty, the timing to dodge them and their attacks is a little bit trickier. 2-3 is a very difficult level as Mini Mario. It takes place in the dark and the light around Mini Mario is so tiny that you can barely see anything that's in front of you. You'll actually have to rely on the many fire spitting piranha plants and other fire hazards to guide you to the end. 2 Dash Tower is a very easy level and climbing up the tower is once again made easier by the low gravity of Mini Mario. Use ground pounds on the bus and you'll be good. 2-4 features those annoying gusts of wind. Thankfully, it doesn't seem to affect Mini Mario more than it does normal sized Mario, so you'll clear this one in no time. 2-5 does feature a lot of pokies and there's this one part where you'll want to go in the sinking sand below all of them as you don't really have any weapons like fire flowers to defeat them sadly. 2-6 features more of those spinning square platforms but this time they're on rails. Ugh, yay. Keep jumping to minimize the amount of time you spend on them and avoid some, you know, gravity problems and you'll be all good. 2 Dash Castle is one of those dumb levels where there's like three paths you can go into and there's only one that leads you to the next area while the other two just repeats the previous segment. I hate those levels, they are so boring. The boss is quite easy though if you stop him before he gets back into his pipe, so you know, get those ground pounds jumps ready. 3-1 contains a lot of penguins sliding around everywhere, but thankfully the low gravity really helps dodging them all. The second part does contain a lot of slopes too, so you know, you'll have to be careful with that. 3-2 does contain a couple of bullet bills here and there, but to be fair, they don't make the stage any harder. 3-3 is a cave with lots of falling icicles. While being really spooky, if you're being real careful, you'll be able to dodge them without any problems. Also, if you mess up, you can do an EPIC GAMER wall jump to save yourself like I did there. <laughs> that was sick. 3 Dash Ghost House features those poles Mario can climb on and is it me or is he climbing them really fast as me Mario? I think it looks pretty funny. 3 Dash Tower usually wants you to climb aboard this elevator and slowly make your way up the level, but with our epic low gravity ability we can wall jump and outrun that slow elevator. <laughs> Sonic would be proud. You're too slow! 3 Dash 4 is a very easy level and and there's not really anything to talk about. 3-5 has one of those square things again. Ugh. Funny enough, you can grab one of those propeller blocks and now gravity is back to normal. Huh, interesting. You can even defeat enemies by jumping on them without having to do a ground pound while you hold that block. So you know, that's kinda cool. 3-Dash Castle is a snake block party. And not any kind of snake blocks. I snake blocks, hey, <laughs> like an idiot I tried to outrun the snake block at the end and got myself into quite a bit of trouble there, but did you know that you can actually do one sided wall jumps as mini Mario? No? Well, me neither, but I learned it the hard way. It works! 4-1 is a level that features quite a lot of water, but remember, we can run on water as Mini Mario, so you know, you'll clear this stage super quickly. 4-2 is a fun level where you'll need to dodge lots of cheap cheeps, so you know, be careful with that. 4-3 is one of those peaceful beach theme levels. There's a couple of enemies here and there, but nothing that will stop you on this quest. 4-Dash Tower is up, and you'll want to be really careful in there. There are lots of big metallic boxes ready to crush you at any moment. You'll have to time your jump correctly, but you'll soon reach Wendy Koopa, and the fight against her is very easy. You know, just like every previous boss fight in this game. 4-4 is one of those underwater stages with a million different enemies that want you dead. I especially dislike the bloopers that come out of those pipes. They are so fast and so annoying. 
4 Ghost House is not made any harder in being Mini Mario. It is still pretty annoying to navigate and I guess you should be careful on those columns that start flying to kill you as they are pretty cheap, but that's about it really. 4 5 is a very easy level, but you'll have to watch out for Lakitu as those spinies are a one-hit kill. Just be careful and time your jumps and you'll reach the end easily. 4 Castle is up and it features a lot of skewers that move really fast to destroy you. You'll want to watch out while jumping and you'll definitely not want to do what I did right there. That was pretty YOLO, I'm glad I didn't die. Ground Pound Wendy and let's move on to World 4 Dash Airship. And you'll have to navigate in between all of those fire torches and this is easier said than done, especially this part where there are cannons shooting bombs. To defeat Bowser Jr, you'll normally want to use the propeller block to fly up high, but we don't actually need it as Mini Mario, as we can just wall jump our way to his head. Easy peasy. 5-1 is next, and does contain those annoying plants that are blowing spiky balls above them, forcing you to jump in between all of that stuff, but the low gravity actually helps a lot. 5-2 contains a lot of giant wigglers in very narrow pathways, and you know, normally you'd probably want to hide in those crevices over there, but as Mini Mario, there is plenty of space for you to fit in there, so you know, no need to worry. 5 3 is home of these annoying spider enemies that I really dislike. Hmm, what's their name though? I keep calling them spider enemies, but I'm sure they have a proper name. Huh, uh, uh huh, uh huh. Bramball? Okay, well I hate Bramballs. 5 Tower is the first tower where being Mini Mario actually makes it a little bit harder, as you can't do wall jumps to save yourself this time because of, well, you know, the spikes on the walls on the sides, obviously. The low gravity also makes the timing a little bit harder for this final part, and you'll have to jump without making a single mistake. Ground pound the bus three times, and there you go. 5 4 is probably the hardest level in this entire run. Normally, you just enjoy your ride on this platform and kick the Koopa Troopas out of it when they hop aboard, but now that you have to do ground pounds just to defeat one single enemy, it is insanely difficult. There are so many enemies falling on the raft with you, even plants falling down from the sky for absolutely no reason. That's so unfair. I died a lot of times trying to beat this stage. I almost even threw my Wiimote at the TV, but eventually I made it. 5 Ghost House is another one of those levels taking place in the dark, but you can bring around a light block with you this time around, so you know, it helps a little bit. 5 5 is a auto scrolling stage happening in the sky, and you'll have to jump on those manta rays until you reach the end, but to be fair, the low gravity that comes with Mini Mario actually helps out a lot. 5 Castle features those fences that you have to climb on, and it's a pretty easy castle, with nothing much to say about it. The bus is quite difficult to beat though, since you can't go down using the donut platforms as you're not heavy enough, so you know, you'll have to defeat Iggy when he's on either side of the arena. 6-1 is a level that has so many bullet bills everywhere, and these guys can one-hit game end you, so you'll have to be very careful and you'll need to avoid them all. 6-2 takes place underground, and it's not a very difficult stage. There's a couple of spinies falling down from the ceiling, so you'll have to watch out for that, but you know, that's all there is to it. Usually, to beat 6-3, you'd have to hit switches to control the water level, but the low gravity of Mini Mario actually allows us to just wall jump our way to the end of the stage super easily. You'll still need to hit the final switch though, but that's literally the only one you need to hit. 6-4 is kind of easy and really there's nothing special to say about it. 6-Tower features a ginormous skewer in the center of the stage that keeps moving up and down the tower. And since you basically moon jump when being Mini Mario, getting to a safe spot is actually way harder than it looks. You'll have to do short hops and basically get a perfect run if you want to be safe. 
And you know those tiny little holes on the walls there that looks perfect to hide? Well, they are actually invisible walls that do not allow Mario to hide in them, so you know, don't count on those. Morton is pretty easy, so do not worry about it. 6-5 is home of this bad boy here, Mr. Park -a Puffer. Considering you can just run on water, this guy won't be much of a problem in here. 6-6 -6 is a level where you enjoy a peaceful boat ride in a dark cave, except it's not that peaceful as it's full of bats and fire bros, so you know, be extra careful. 6-Dash Castle starts off being really easy, but then you'll soon reach the second part where there are spiky boulders falling from the ceiling. And these boulders are pretty annoying, and you'll want to dodge them all for sure. After defeating Morton, we'll reach 6-Dash Airship, and it is a very long and boring auto-scroller level. There's really nothing special to that stage, it's just bland. 7-1 features more of those spinning square platforms, yay, gotta love those. 7-2 has so many chain chumps and let's be real, Mini Mario really looks like a dog treat, so you'll wanna be careful around them. 7-3 contains a lot of fuzzies, so you'll have to find your way around them, but it's not very difficult though. 7- Tower takes place on an elevator and the first part does contain a lot of bullet bills, but you can actually ground pound on those to go up faster, so you know, that's pretty neat. The second part is pretty similar, except this time it contains the bumps, which makes it a little bit harder. I actually preferred the bullet bills. The boss fight against Ludwig is easy, so no worries. 7 Dash Ghost House is actually pretty easy, and that's kind of surprising, as you know, Ghost House levels are usually a pain. 7 Dash 4 is an easy level that features pipes moving up and down. It also contains those platforms that you move left and right by tilting the Wiimote, so you know, that's kind of cool. 7-5 has those enemies that spit out clouds, and that makes it harder to navigate your way to the end of the level, but once more, the low gravity of Mini Mario actually makes it easier. 7-6 has those flying beetles, and you'll need to jump from one to another until you reach the end of the stage, but you know, that's kind of easy. 7-Dash Castle features more scary skewers that you need to dodge, and it does feature a couple of parts where low gravity is really annoying, especially this one where you need to fall down before the skewer hurts you. Took me a couple of tries, but it is possible to do it. Yay! Hi Ludwig! Bye Ludwig. 8-1 features those lava boulders falling from the sky, so you know you'll have to avoid them all, which is kind of difficult at times, especially with those lava geysers in the way. 8-2 is a very easy level, and being mini Mario doesn't make it any different. 8-3 is another easy stage, as the moon jumps from Mini Mario actually helps out a lot to dodge those lava waves. 8- Tower is pretty easy, and once again, you can use those wall jumps to go up the tower quite fast. Just make sure you don't get squished by the moving blocks, and you'll soon reach Kamek. And defeating him is quite easy, it's literally the same fight as before, but you need to do ground pounds instead of just jumping, so yeah. 8-4 is an underwater stage in the lava world, eh, that's pretty weird. The stage takes place in the dark, so you'll have to be careful to dodge everything that stands between you and that flagpole. 8-5 is one of those annoying auto-scrolling levels where you'd want to move super fast but you can't cause you gotta wait for the screen to catch up. Come on screen, we don't have all day. 8-6 has lava rising and it is supposed to make you scared and force you to go super fast, but Mini Mario's moon jumping ability actually makes it super easy. 8-7 asks you to ride this very fast skull roller coaster. It is a pretty intense level and the low grav actually makes it way more difficult, but so much more fun. 8- Airship is up and it's kind of an easy level where you need to dodge the cannonballs. Bowser Jr. is also a pretty easy boss fight, as the way to fight him doesn't really change as you being mini Mario. Welcome to the final level, 8- Bowser and it's really not that difficult. There ain't a lot that can go wrong if you just take your time dodging fire bars, lava bubbles and all other hazards. Use your epic jumping skills to defeat the first Bowser in a matter of seconds, literally, and you'll get to fight Bowser 2, which is more of a platforming level than it is a fight. 
The main difficulty here comes from everything killing you in one hit, but if you're being super careful, you'll be okay, and there we go. We have flushed Bowser down the drain, and we have saved the princess. And all of this while being super tiny. <laughs> Gotta admit, this looks pretty funny, with Peach being super tall and Mario being super tiny. Anyways, is it possible to beat new Super Mario Bros Wii while being Mini Mario? Yes, it is. The fact that you have low gravity actually helps most of the time, and obviously, the main difficulty comes from you not being able to use power up or, you know, being defeated by anything that touches you in one hit, but it's actually not that difficult. <laughs> New Super Mario Bros. Wii is a classic. I've probably beaten it a million times, but if there's something that I would complain about, it's the difficulty. This game is way too easy. I always end up with 99 lives after only a couple hours of playtime, which is why today we're actually going to make our life difficult. There's this power-up in the new Super Mario Bros. franchise that's usually meant to be used to reach secret areas, and then you discard it for a better one. I'm talking about the Mini Mushroom. We have attempted to beat a couple of Mario games using only this spar up and today we'll try to beat the Secret World 9 from Mario Wii as a tiny Mini Mario. The rules are simple. We are going to try to beat the Special World 9 in New Super Mario Bros Wii as Mini Mario. Being this tiny means that everything can kill you in one hit, so even a Goomba becomes dangerous. Gravity is affected by you being tiny, so we'll have to adapt to this new mechanic as well. Just for additional fun, I'll be attempting to beat all of the 8 levels without touching a single coin, you know, for old times sake. Now that everything has been done, let's do this. World 9-1 is home to a lot of Goombas and Koopas, so we'll always have to be careful while walking. Soon, we'll be reaching those spinning colored blocks, and these can be quite annoying, especially now that I'm also trying to avoid touching those dirty coins. If you let the platforms move a little bit too much, then you'll start sliding on the side and getting back up doing a wall jump is pretty scary. Real soon, another hazard will be added to the stage. Fire spitting piranha plants. You'll have to constantly be jumping if you want to avoid those annoying enemies, but thankfully, the low gravity of Mini Mario actually makes it easier. Jump in between those plants and you'll reach the end and you'll do it without a coin as well. In World 9-2, there's an annoying porky puffer constantly trying to eat Mario. And you know what, I can't really blame it. Mario does look like fish food when he's that tiny. Anyways, one advantage you get from being mini Mario is that you're so light that you can run on water, which helps out a lot to dodge the pesky coins in some of those sections. Even if we decide to swing on vines instead of running on water, it's usually possible to dodge them all. Soon, we'll get to this part where going up there in the secret zone is kind of out of the question, as it's full of evil coins. But by making very precise jumps in between the Koopas and the coins down there, then we can clear this part. Finally, those circle outlines turn into deadly coins after you walk into them, so quickly run away before you collect a coin. Make some very precise jumps on those platforms and you'll soon reach the end. World 9-3 is filled to the brim with evil bullet bills. Thankfully, we can actually just run and dodge them all. And when needed, well, they actually become allies. And oh, look at those coins we can't dodge. Let's use our new ally, Bully the Bullet Bill, and clear that jump. Thank you, Bully! The ending will pit you against bigger bullet bills, and those will be a little bit scary, but don't worry too much, as they can also be used to avoid the evil coins on the way. They did start to get a little bit scary near the end, following me that close, but I did reach the pipe without a single problem, and without a single coin. World 9-4 is an auto-scroller level that contains a couple of hazards. First off, there's tons of walking bombs, and while being Mini Mario allows you to bounce on them without igniting them, our friend the fire spitting plants are back, and they will do it anyway. 
I used the POW block over there to get those evil coins to disappear and make my way to the other side safely. This part there was a real pain in the butt, because there are so many coins around that platform and there's a bomb shooting cannon on the right, so just making a run will not work. I ended up doing a wall jump on the left side over there to clear this whole section coinless. Wow, Mini Mario is making things easier again. <laughs> Epic. After this part of the level is complete, the rest is super easy and you'll soon reach the flagpole once again as Mini Mario and without a coin. World 9-5 is up and this ice theme level usually requires you to press those question mark switches to create platforms that help you move up. But let's add another challenge to this stage. Is it possible to beat it without those switches? Well, this first jump is now a little bit tricky because we cannot use the platform anymore, but with the low gravity of Mini Mario, it is actually possible to do it. Moving up on those semi-solid platforms is nerve-wracking because they do contain a lot of evil coins. Avoid Mr. Penguin and make your way up there. Once you reach this part, you'll have to do a very precise jump underneath two deadly coins. Scary, but possible. Keep making your way up the ice tower while avoiding fuzzies, coins and other hazards and you'll make it to this final part over there which requires you to do some precise jumps underneath coins and above fuzzies. Once that part is done, this level is complete. World 9-6 is all about lava geysers and platforms on rails. There's a couple of coins on the way, but having Mini Mario's low gravity actually helps out a lot. To be honest, I'm starting to wonder if being Mini Mario isn't the pro strat to beat this game coinless. Keep jumping above coins and keep avoiding the lava and you'll soon reach this part. Now that's a lot of evil coins on the way. Thankfully, we can just do an epic jump from that platform there and land right in between those two sets of coins. Keep moving right on the lava platforms until you reach the end pipe and right afterwards, the flagpole. World 9-7 is a very scary looking world. The floor is made out of ice cubes and there's tons of evil piranha plants that will try to melt those blocks with their fireballs. As you can see, there's two sorts of things in those ice blocks, munchers and evil coins. Both are deadly for this quest, but coins are even more scary. My strategy here was to keep moving, never stay at the same spot for more than one second. This includes running super fast under those plants as well. Once you reach this fire bro, just make sure not to pay too much attention to him and keep moving right and then you'll reach the flagpole and you'll be done with this stage. World 9-8 is a really bouncy level. The floor is made out of clouds and those clouds bounce you up in the sky instantly. As you can see, there's lots of coins and there are fuzzies to dodge too. To be fair, this is scarier looking than it actually is, because even if you touch a cloud platform and start bouncing, well just push down on the d-pad and do a ground pound to fall back down. I suggest avoiding this p-switch altogether as it will turn all of those safe blocks into dangerous coins. Keep making your way to the right using the ground pound strategy and you'll soon reach this part where there's king beals smashing everything in their way. Do a very precise jump above those coins and then keep moving right while avoiding those other coins and the king bills and then you'll soon reach the end flagpole and also the end of this quest. So is it possible to beat World 9 in new Super Mario Bros Wii as Mini Mario and without touching a single coin? Well, yes, yes it is! Whoa, two challenges in one single video and they're both possible? Now that's a first. To be fair, that was not a very difficult challenge if you just take your time and having Mini Mario is actually helpful to this quest and actually makes it easier. That's not what I was expecting going into this challenge, but oh well. Following the success of New Super Mario Bros DS and New Super Mario Bros Wii, Nintendo decided to release a third game in the series and thus was born New Super Mario Bros 2. Hmm. As stupid as this may sound, it was called New Super Mario Bros 2 because it is meant to be a direct sequel to the DS game, so it doesn't have the silly things the Wii version had, you know, like spin jumps, 4 players multiplayer and Yoshi. Pfft. 
everybody hated those, good riddance. Anyways, one thing that wasn't destroyed was the mini mushroom power-up. You know, that tiny blue mushroom that turns you into a blob of pixels you can barely see? This made me wonder, can we be the entire game that way? The rules are simple. We are going to be playing all of the six worlds in New Super Mario Bros. 2, one after another, and all of this while staying as Mini Mario if possible. This means we won't be able to try out any of the new power-ups, like the Coin Flower and the Super Leaf, as these power-ups make us bigger. While in the Mini Mario form, every enemy kills us in one hit, so we'll have to be super careful while playing that way. Speaking of, defeating those enemies will also be more difficult for us us, as simply jumping on their heads doesn't work anymore. Instead, we'll have to do a ground pound attack if we want to damage them. The gravity is also a little bit different as Mini Mario, making you floatier than Big Mario. Getting Mini Mushrooms is not possible in World 1-1, so we'll have to grab it from a later level. And World 5-3 does contain one in this invisible block over there. Now that everything has been set, let's see if we can beat New Super Mario Bros. 2 as Mini Mario. Here we go. World 1-1 starts off easy, containing a few Goombas here and there, but mostly what you'll see here are coins. Yep, I forgot to mention it, but this game is all about coins. Coins here, coins there, coins everywhere! Good thing I'm not doing a without a coin episode today, I'd have a headache for sure. 1-2 takes place underground, and most of the Koopas in this stage are locked behind some blocks. You have to hit POW blocks to free them. I wonder what those poor Koopas did to Bowser to be locked behind cages like this. I almost feel bad for them. 1-3 is up, and this stage contains a couple of snake blocks moving on platforms. I don't know if we are supposed to be threatened by those, but it sure doesn't work. 1-0 tower is also filled with snake blocks moving left left and right. You'll have to time your jumps right if you want to make your way to the top. The low gravity of Mini Mario doesn't really make the ascension up the tower any more difficult, so you'll soon reach the boss, Reznor. As you know, defeating Reznor is a total joke. You can't really die a What? I, I died to Reznor? So yeah, pro tip, as Mini Mario you can actually get squished by the moving blocks, so be wary of that. 1-4 contains a couple of moving and tilting mushroom platforms. There's a lot of Koopa and Goombas on your path, but by being careful, you'll soon reach the flagpole. 1-5 takes place underwater, and this stage does contain a lot of cheap cheeps and those purple ones that follow you around for a while. Thankfully, you can swim around all of these obstacles and you'll soon reach the end. 1-Dash Castle does contain its fair share of lava bubble enemies. Thankfully, there's typically always a rope you can hang onto or some platforms to stand on to avoid turning into a roasted Mario chicken. Dodge the evil thwomp to reach the first boss, Roy Koopa. And this dumb dude just keeps running left and right and hits his own head against the wall, giving him a concussion and giving you a lot of time to do a ground pound attack. <laughs> what a dumb dumb. 2-1 does contain a couple of evil piranha plants that are awaiting a fresh snack if you end up falling in between the moving block platforms. So just make sure that doesn't happen and this level will be done. 2-2 takes place on those weird totem pole platforms, but it's a pretty easy level to be honest. The main difficulty comes from the many hammer and boomerang bros. Avoid the things they throw and avoid the final thick hammer bros and you'll be good. 2-3 is an underground cave that contains a fair share of pokies and other spiky enemies, so make sure to dodge them all. 2-Dash Tower is full of moving blocks that can potentially crush you if you're not paying attention, but we've seen this over and over again, this is nothing new for us. Just time your moves and jumps and you'll reach Reznor. Hit the blocks from underneath to defeat those big bad dinosaurs. In 2-Ghost House, you'll have to avoid some boos, which is what always happens in a ghost house, but this time you have to escape the, the thick, thick boo. boo! Whoa, this boy is big! Keep running to the right and dodge the obstacles along the way until you reach the end. 
2-4 takes place in those pyramid-shaped blocks. You'll have to climb on those while avoiding all of the falling enemies, including those fire snakes that are super dangerous for us. Thankfully, this stage is very short, so you'll reach the end very quickly. 2-5 is full of chain chumps that would love a bite of that Mario booty. But thankfully, they're all stuck to a pole, so they can't really move to attack you. So just jump over them and you'll be good. 2 Dash Castle wants you to hop aboard this weird raft that only moves when you're standing on it. This will force you to be patient and avoid a couple of enemies here and there. I kinda like this platform and would not say no to seeing this in Super Mario Maker 2. Just saying, Nintendo, if you're watching this, you know what to do. No, 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 not demonetize me! No, 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 no! To defeat Iggy Koopa, just wait for his pet Chain Chump to move him down, leaving him vulnerable and do some epic ground pound attacks. Easy. 3-1 takes place on a beach with some water on the way, but since we are mini Mario, we can actually run on water, so this makes this level super easy. You can basically hold down right for the entire stage and nothing will ever hurt you. 3-2 takes place underwater and contains many dangerous things like cheap cheeps, urchins, baby urchins and evil water tornadoes that want to suck you down to your doom. The only difficult part is at the end where you have to swim in between urchins and snake blocks. All of this while being chased by two fast swimming fishes. And these guys have wall hacks on and they can go through walls which is totally unfair. Ban those dudes please, come on, they're cheating. 3-3 will ask you to climb on the many spider webs if you want to reach the end alive. This level also marks the return of those spider enemies from New Super Mario Bros. DS. And once more, just bounce on them to make your way to the end. 3 Dash Tower is an auto scroller underwater vertical level. Woo! All of the ingredients for a very mediocre stage are reunited. This tower contains lots of moving blocks, fish bones, skewers, and other things that are meant to kill you. But since everything will defeat you in one hit, you'll have to be very careful and avoid all of those things. This stage is very nerve-wracking. One thing that isn't scary is the boss, Reznor. Hit the block and he's gonna go bye-bye. 3-4 contains some poison water that kills you if you touch it. But thankfully, you can just bounce on the many crates along the way to reach the end. 3 Dash Ghost House contains many rooms, fake doors, and secret paths to find. So, yeah, basically a typical ghost house. After wasting too long on fake doors, you'll eventually and thankfully reach the end. 3 Dash 5 is another underwater stage, and this one is really terrifying. First off, there are lots of fast moving bloopers out for blood, and there are some huge boulders rolling at you. So, not only do you have to dodge those bloopers, you're also forced to swim and hide from the evil boulders. Oof, this one's scary. 3 Dash Castle contains lots of saws moving on rails. There's even bouncing saws on the path. The low gravity jump mechanic makes the stage a little bit more complicated, but if you take your time, you can actually reach the boss quite easily. Wendy Koopa is kinda slow to defeat, as you absolutely have to swim and dodge the cheap cheeps underwater before you can actually do a ground pound attack. 4-1 is a stage filled with micro Goombas. Finally, enemies my size. What is not my size are those big spiky boulders rolling around the stage. Watch out for those as you climb this mountain and you'll soon reach the end. 4 Dash Ghost House takes place in between two walls. Yup, this stage is kind of a fake auto scroller stage as you can only move when the walls move as well. This makes it a little bit more difficult as you'd want to avoid getting crushed, but it's gonna be okay. 4 Dash 2 contains lots of enemies, especially Koopa Troopas. These guys are literally everywhere. There's also lots of evil plants in those red pipes, so you'll have to time your moves and watch out for that. 4 Dash Tower takes place on a frozen elevator platform that constantly gets swarmed with evil enemies. It is time like those where I miss the ability to walk on walls as mini Mario. I wish they didn't cut that mechanic as well. The Reznor fight is kinda easy, as usual. 4-3 is an icy level allowing you to slide your way through the first section. 
You'll have to be careful during this part, as it contains lots of evil plants, but by being careful, you'll soon slide your way to the end. 4-4 contains lots of scale lift platforms, but if you move fast enough, you won't even tilt them, making this stage a total walk in the park. 4-5 takes place underwater once again, except this time around there's gonna be more evil hungry cheap cheeps that wanna eat you alive. Thankfully, there's always more than enough space to avoid them all. 4- Castle is filled with spiky boulders moving left and right. There's also a couple falling down from the ceiling. Oh, and did I mention the many fire bars along the way? As you can see, there's lots of things out to end your career, but by being careful, you'll be able to make it alive to the bus, Morton. This dude is a joke. Just avoid the spiky boulders, move up and do a ground pound on his head. And then repeat this three times and voila! 5-1 contains those ropes and as mini Mario, they make you bounce super high in the sky. Keeping that in mind, watch out to not over or undershoot your jumps and you'll be good. 5-2 is home of our best buddy, Lakitu. And this dude is super annoying, especially when there's two Lakitus at once. Ugh. Avoiding all of the spinies they throw at you is quite difficult, especially on those small square platforms over there. I eventually got sick of dying to a spiny, so I took matters into my own hands and destroyed Lakitu and ran away with his cloud. <laughs> That's what you get for being annoying, dude. 5-3 is a pretty easy level featuring some pipe cannons shooting you to the next part. This is also a great stage to replenish your mini mushrooms in case you need to. Complete this stage with a YOLO leap of faith and you'll be done. 5 Dash Tower is kinda difficult. Lava is rising underneath you, so you have to quickly make your way to the top. And let me tell you, this is easier said than done. You'll have to move on those fences that love to spin around and rotate. There's lots of fire things out to burn you along the way, so you'll have to watch out for those as well. Thankfully, Resnor is a piece of cake to defeat. 5-4 contains those mushroom platforms that only move when you are on top of them. Watch out for those that also contain Koopas, as they can be quite deadly if you're not careful. 5-5 is a bullet bill extravaganza. These flying enemies will be shot from all over the place. Thankfully, you can bounce on them as Mini Mario, so they actually help out a lot this time around. Bounce your way to the flagpole and this one will be done. 5-6 is one weird stage. You have to go down this mountain while avoiding the Koopas, plants and other hazards on the way. This level also contains lots of those bike platforms that only move when you move them around. Not gonna lie, this is a pretty boring stage. 5- Castle contains a lot of fences Mario must climb on, but there's also these ones on wheels that can move up and down when Mario punches them. This will be used to avoid the evil plants along the way, which is definitely super cool. Speaking of cool things, the boss fight is also pretty original. To defeat Ludwig, you have to use those cannons to shoot your mini Mario buddy up on him to knock him off the chains and allow you to do a ground pound attack. 6-1 is home of hot lava boulders falling from the sky. These things are pretty dangerous, with some moving faster than others. Make sure to stay as close to the floor as possible if you want to improve your odds of making out to the end alive. This part with the floor that can actually be destroyed by the boulders is especially very scary as Mini Mario. 6 Ghost House is a level with many rooms that all look the same. It's another epic ghost maze. Wow, so fun. Ugh. I seriously dislike this stage as I got lost way too many times during my quest. If you end up opening the wrong door, you're sent back to the beginning of the stage, which is not fun at all. Nintendo, stop that. 6-2 takes place inside of a volcano and you have to ride this sexy dry bone lava raft. This thing looks really good. You can skip a part of this level as mini Mario by jumping off screen above the lava, but for the second part you'll absolutely have to ride the raft to the end. 6-3 is a classic underground level featuring fire bros, stretching mushroom platforms and lots of blocks. You can actually jump on top of some of these blocks to skip part of the stage, you know, like we could do in the original Super Mario Bros games. <laughs> Good times. 
Six Dash Tower contains lots of fire torches that will only stop shooting fire if you hit the block underneath them. This is actually a pretty cool mechanic. It's a shame it never came back in the new Super Mario Bros. games released afterwards. The wheel on which Resnor spin is really big this time around, but it doesn't make the fight any more difficult. 6-4 marks the return of the evil crow enemies from the original DS game, and these guys are as annoying now as they were back then. This stage is also filled with ghost platforms that are not very stable, making this stage trickier. Thankfully, this is a very short level, so you clear it very quickly. 6-5 contains lots of Bowser head statues that shoot deadly fireballs. You'll have to watch out for those during the quest. There's also lots of evil spiky boulders you'll have to watch out for on your path, but if you don't tilt the platform they're onto, they won't move at all and this will make your life easier. Welcome to the final stage, 6-Bowser. And this one is almost three levels in one. The first part is filled with lava bubbles, fire torches and dry bones that you'll have to avoid. You also cannot make this donut platform fall as Mini Mario, so you'll have to carefully slide down this wall instead. The second part of this stage will force you to hide behind those walls to avoid getting turned into a stone statue by the Koopalings in the background. This is not going to be too difficult, thankfully. The final part contains lots of fireballs that you'll need to avoid, and after that, you'll finally reach Bowser. The fight against this dude is not very difficult. Just avoid his hammers and wait for him to jump to go under and hit that switch for a quick victory. And there we go. We did... Oh, wait, we actually didn't do it yet. Bowser 2 is up, and this one is not actually a fight, it's more of a stage in which you have to jump from platform to platform to slowly make your way to the top and hit the final switch. And there we go, we did it. We have saved the princess as Mini Mario. So, is it possible to beat New Super Mario Bros. 2 as Mini Mario? Yes, it is! This game is actually so focused on coins that it forgot to add difficulty. Oh, and the fact that there's only 6 main worlds also makes this quest a breeze. When Mario eats a mushroom, he becomes bigger and stronger. The thing is, there's one power-up that does the complete opposite, the mini mushroom. This power-up, or power-down for that matter, makes you tiny, allowing you to enter secret pipes. But the downside is that everything kills you in one hit. Usually, you grab that mushroom, you get the secret star coin hidden in the tiny pipe, and you go back to a more traditional size. But what if we try to beat new Super Mario Bros U while always being Mini Mario? The rules are simple. We are going to try to complete the entire new Super Mario Bros U game while being Mini Mario at all times. This means that we are not allowed to collect a single power-up like a mushroom, a fire flower, an acorn suit, as those will automatically kick us out of the Mini Mario state. Being Mini Mario changes the gravity of Mario a little bit, making him floatier than when he's big. We also cannot defeat simple enemies by just jumping on them, instead we have to do a ground pound. Obviously, you can't get a mini mushroom right from the beginning, so I had to get those in a later level. World 2-4 is the easiest place to grab them, as you can get one in the level itself, plus get one for later if you beat the stage with the last two digits of the timer being 6s. You know, like 266, 166, and 66. Anyways, now that our inventory looks fantastic, let's see if we can beat the game without becoming bigger. World 1-1 is a pretty easy stage to start this quest with. Basically, there are gonna be a couple of enemies, including those flying squirrel ones, but nothing that truly gets in your way. 1-2 takes place underground, and there are many times where you'll need to wait for the piranha plants to go back inside of their pipes before you go. Considering anything that touches you kills you in one hit, we're gonna have to take this one slowly. The low gravity mechanic can be useful if you want to avoid all of those evil coins while going down this path here, just saying. One Dash Tower is the perfect place to tell you about a new gameplay mechanic that is only available to Mini Mario. 
you can actually run on walls while being so tiny, resulting in you going up the tower way faster, meaning you'll reach the mad lad himself in no time. The most difficult part of this fight against Boom Boom is getting the timing right for your ground pound attacks, but after a little bit of practice, you'll figure this one out. 1-3 is next, and this one is full of rolling hills, which do not impact Mini Mario differently than his bigger counterpart. Avoid the evil mole's enemy along the way, and this one will be done in no time. 1-4 takes place in the sky on those moving mushroom platforms. The stage is filled with giant piranha plants that can be annoying at times. The thing is, you can actually go grab a pink baby Yoshi from the world map and use his floating abilities to go above all of the stage hazards. You can actually glide for a very long amount of time as mini Mario with that Yoshi, because, I mean, you're less heavy and everything, so that's kinda cool. 1-5 is not a very difficult stage and doesn't have any interesting mechanics. I did do this Le Epic Trick move to get those coins down there, but it really doesn't matter. I just wanted to show off. 1- Castle features tons of swinging platforms above dangerous lava. Thankfully, the low gravity from Mini Mario actually makes those jumps way easier, so you'll have no trouble reaching Lemmy and kicking his little butt with a couple of ground pound attacks. 2-1 has lots of big rock statues and sand geysers, but nothing that can prove to be a problem for the quest though. 2-2 takes place in a cave full of pokies. You'll have to be very careful navigating this dark cave, as those sand geysers can shoot you upwards into a deadly pokey if you're not paying attention. Thankfully, the low gravity is also a blessing in disguise, as it allows you to float in between the pokies. Watch out while being in the dark part of this cave, as Mini Mario is so tiny that he barely produces any light around him, so you'll have trouble seeing the obstacles that hide in the shadows. 2-3 also takes place in a dark cave, but this time around, there's a couple more things to help you see the light such as those fire enemies, the fireball spitting piranha plants, and the light platforms. You'll still have to be very careful in here though. 2 Dash Tower usually wants you to spin those screws to move the platforms around, but let's do another challenge for this stage. Is it possible to be 2 Dash Tower without using those screws? The rules are simple, don't use the screws. The first part is actually pretty easy, and the only tricky part is going up the pipe here, but a well-timed jump will do the trick just fine. Do lots of wall jumps to go up during the second section, and you can even do wall jumps on one single wall and gain height, so you know that's pretty easy. For this final part, well, just move on either side and do some wall jumps, and you'll soon reach and defeat Boom Boom once more. And this challenge is complete! 2-4 is home of our friend Spike, and this level is not very difficult if you just go above them all. Quick reminder that if you lost a couple of mini mushrooms while dying, well, completing this stage with 66 seconds remaining will replenish your inventory, so let's recharge while we're here. 2-5 features more spikes throwing boulders down at you, but the low gravity actually helps you out a lot in here. You can skip most of the platforms and dodge those evil fishy boopkins, so you'll quickly make your way to world. 2-6, and this stage features an angry Lakitu throwing out spinies from the top here while you're down there avoiding the evil piranha plants. I gotta admit that this level is really annoying because Lakitu is flying so close to you that you have to do short hops only or else you'll touch him and lose a life. 2-Dash Castle is meant to scare you with moving platforms that can potentially crush you to death, but as Mini Mario, you're so tiny that you have plenty of time to just move out of the way. It's one of those levels where being Mini Mario completely removes the scary or difficult part about it. Dodge the pokies that Morton tries to hit you with, and do 3 ground pounds and you'll be all good. The infamous Water World World 3 is finally up, and 3-1 is actually quite easy. There's lots of water sprouts, but we can just glide above them all and pay no attention and we'll clear this level in record time. 3-2 takes place underwater, and features a couple of annoying bloopers following you around. Thankfully, being Mini Mario makes you a smaller target for them, and swimming in between all of those pesky enemies becomes a fun and easy task. 3-Dash Tower starts off underwater and features lots of evil skewers ready to turn you into a Mario kebab, so you'll want to be very careful. 
keep timing your jumps to avoid the spiky things and you'll soon reach boom boom and clear out this stage. 3 Dash Ghost House is a stage featuring all sorts of shenanigans like circles of booze, evil fish bones and invisible walls, but thankfully nothing is made more difficult by being mini Mario for this stage, so keep exploring it and you'll soon find the exit door. 3 Dash 3 has tons of flying cheap cheeps and this can get real scary as those guys will kill you in one hit. I suggest staying as high as possible at all times, as going down truly makes the level terrifying. For example, going for that star coin down there really forced me to wait for the perfect moment to go back up, as tons of cheap cheeps were ganging up on me. 3 4 is here to remind us that we can actually walk on water as Mini Mario, and even walk up water, so that's always good to know. Besides that, this level is pretty easy if you time your jumps and make sure to avoid those spiky dudes. 3-5 takes place underwater once again, except this time, well there's a freaking dragon eel following you at all times, sometimes blocking your path, other times forcing you to enter pipes to avoid becoming his snack, it truly is a spooky level. 3 Dash Castle contains tons of fences you can climb on to avoid the fire torches, so this stage actually isn't particularly difficult. There's a second part taking place underwater where you need to avoid those torpedo Ted's enemies, but being Mini Mario actually makes it way easier. Larry is a pretty easy boss to defeat and we'll soon be able to move on to World 4. 4-1 features those star platforms that tilt left and right if you touch them, and at one point I did a very epic gamer move to save myself from death and I was actually pretty proud of that. 4-2 has lots of sliding penguins, and you can't really hurt them without doing a ground pound attack, and with ice and slopes, well it's kind of a bad idea to do that anyways, so just avoid them at all costs. 4 Dash Tower wants you to climb on top of icicles to make your way up to boom boom, but as Mini Mario, we can run on walls, remember? So with that move, we can actually skip a lot of the stage and that's actually pretty cool. 4 Dash 3 contains more rolling hills, except this time, well they're made out of ice and are slippery. This is also the stage where I learned that Mario running on walls wasn't always a cool mechanic, as shown here. Oops. This final part features lots of rolling hills, piranha plants and fireballs, so be very careful and you'll be good. 4-4 contains tons of scale platforms and surprisingly enough, they move at the same speed when you are mini Mario. I figured this would be impacted as we're less heavy, but looks like it isn't, guess we're still a heavy spaghetti filled plumber after all. 4-5 is a cave full of deadly icicles ready to fall down on you at any moment. If you keep running like a crazy dude, you won't have a problem beating this one though. 4 Dash Ghost House shows us that being Mini Mario can sometimes be annoying. To get to the end here, you have to keep jumping to make these blocks go up before they turn back into ugly coins, and with the low gravity mechanic, it's actually quite slower and way more difficult. The first time I attempted this stage, I actually ran out of time and had to start over. Wow, this is the first time that this has ever happened to me. Crazy. 4 Dash Castle has lots of moving platforms, and normally this would scare me, but we can jump so far across gaps as Mini Mario that this level becomes an easy one. The fight against Wendy is a little bit tricky as you can't bounce on her or else you'll touch the deadly spikes up above, so you'll have to ground pound after hitting her with a ground pound to make sure that doesn't happen. Before we get to 5-1, we have an intermission stage in 5-airship, and to be fair, this very slow auto-scroller won't be much of a problem, although I have to say that the underwater section with the homing torpedo Ted is kind of annoying. The fight against Bowser Jr. is not made any more difficult by being Mini Mario, so let's get rid of him and move on to the next level. 5-1 is the land of the giants. Giant Goomba, giant Koopas, giant plants, giant pipes, giant blocks, and me, Mini Mario. I truly feel tiny in here. At least the level in itself is pretty easy, as you can just bounce from one enemy to another. 5-2 is also a stage that can be beaten quite easily as Mini Mario. Basically, there are moving lugs and blocks, but with the low gravity, we don't even need to pay attention or touch those at all. We can simply spin jump our way to safety and complete this stage in no time. 5-3 is home of Bram Balls, you know those annoying spider-like enemies? Well these guys are truly annoying. I was actually afraid of the end of that stage, as I remember you have to go down donut platforms and Mini Mario is not heavy enough to trigger those. But thankfully, 
Big Brain Nintendo thought about that and included a mini pipe that leads directly to the end, so we're all good. Thanks, Reggie. My body is ready. Five Dash Tower is full of snake blocks that guide you to the top. And to be fair, the only thing that changes as Mini Mario is the timing of your jumps. As gravity is lower, you'll have to jump ahead of time to land and avoid the spiky pendulums, but that's all there is to it. Boom Boom is super huge in this tower, but this actually makes it way easier as he becomes a bigger target for your ground pound attacks. 5 Dash Ghost House is a labyrinth level where you need to find the correct door to get to the end. It's a pretty boring level, not gonna lie. 5 Dash 4 is filled with evil poison water, so you have to jump from one pipe to another and make sure not to fall in it. There's a couple of boos on your path, but none that will be a problem. In fact, it's another one of those levels that are made easier by being mini Mario. 5-5 takes place in a dark cave underwater, so I suggest you quickly grab the star from this question block there to see everything and easily make your way to the end of this evil stage. 5-6 is full of seesaw platforms that keep rotating, but thankfully, as mini Mario, landing on those is made easier once more. I'm starting to really enjoy the mini mushroom actually. In 5-7, you have to keep bouncing on a big wiggler to make your way to the end of the stage, but in a way, you don't really need him that much, especially since you can do one-sided wall jumps. 5 Dash Castle is filled with lava waves that are meant to scare you or something, but there is more than enough place to land and jump, and you'll never touch them if you're paying attention. Iggy is a very annoying boss, as your window to attack him is very narrow. You have to time your ground pound attacks before he goes back inside of a pipe and uses his magic wand. It's kinda tricky and requires good timing, but it's actually possible to do it. 6-1 contains lots of fuzzies on rails, so timing your jumps becomes critical in here. Make sure you take your time and you'll be good. 6-2 forces you to avoid this evil Parker Puffer enemy and makes you jump in and out of the water. This gets annoying if you're running, cause as mini Mario you will float on water, giving more time for the evil fish to defeat you, so my tip here is to ground pound to enter the water. This removes that precious second where Mario floats and allows you to avoid turning into fish food. 6 Dash Tower contains lots of rolling spiky enemies, but being able to run up walls actually makes this stage easier. There's even a secret pipe you can enter to skip a good portion of the level. Time your jumps correctly while going up, and you'll soon reach and defeat the mad lad. 6-3 is a vertical level full of plants, chain chumps, and flying squirrels. While this may seem like a lot, just be careful and pay attention and you'll reach the end in no time. 6-4 takes place in a dark cave, and once again, being mini Mario kinda sucks because it really gets rid of a lot of light around you, making you do more blind jumps and other dangerous maneuvers. Thankfully, there is lots of light blocks, so you don't have anything to worry about. 6-5 features those swinging chain ropes, and for some reason, the low gravity really makes Mario fly really far ahead as he's swinging out of those. This is actually pretty cool and makes this level super fun. 6 Dash Tower number 2 will force you to spin those screws and make these platforms move up to reach the end. You can skip some of those by simply running onto walls, which never gets old, and I wish Mario could have this move even when he's not mini. The boss fight against the big sumo bro is not made any more difficult as mini Mario. Just remember that you have to do a ground pound attack to hurt him instead of a normal jump, and you'll be good. 6 7 is an underground stage filled with moving blocks, so you'll have to time your jumps just right to get to the end. It is slower at times, forcing you to wait for bats to move out of your way, and faster at other times where you can just run on the walls. 6 Dash Castle has lots of falling blocks, so you'll have to be patient and wait for them to bring you to a safe spot. There's also this part here where you can avoid hitting the P-Switch altogether and just wall jump your way to the bus, which is a pretty cool thing. Roy is very annoying to fight, as he's constantly jumping, moving back while shooting his cannon, and he's also moving on the platforms themselves. Getting a ground pound under those circumstances is really difficult, and it took me a while to get it right, but eventually, I did it. 
7-1 wants you to slowly move to the right by standing on this moving cloud platform. Jump to avoid enemy and other obstacles to get to the end. 7-2 is filled with seesaws and many enemies. It's really annoying at times, but by being careful, it's not really difficult. 7-3 features those platforms that only move while you're on top of them, but thankfully they do work even when Mario is all tiny, so we're good. 7-Dash Tower is full of moving platforms on rails, but thankfully, being Mini Mario allows you to slowly make your way from one platform to the next. The boss fight here is against Kamek the Evil Sorcerer, and getting a ground pound requires more timing as Mini Mario, but it is possible by being a little bit lucky. Also, I need to mention that all of a sudden the donut platforms fall under Mini Mario's weight, which is dumb because it never worked that way before. Pfft, come on Reggie. 7 Dash Ghost House is a boring and tedious level filled with doors, fake paths, booze, and blah blah blah. I don't like ghost houses. 7 Dash 4 contains lots of bouncing clouds, and these platforms are super fun as Mini Mario, as they make you jump super high off screen. Combine this with those spin jumps and you can almost skip the entire stage. 7-5 features those floating water bubbles that you need to swim into to get to the top. Or, you know, you can just run on walls, it's up to you. 7-6 becomes a nodal scroller level as soon as you touch those snake blocks. Thing is, you can float so far and bounce so high on enemies that you don't even need the snake block to complete the stage. Isn't that cool? 7 Dash Castle has more moving platforms meant to crush you, but once more, being Mini Mario doesn't actually make this any more difficult. Ludwig is also pretty easy to defeat, as you just have to target the real one with a good old ground pound. 7 Dash Airship is also very easy, as it's a slow auto scroller stage. Bowser Jr. is easy to defeat if you got the good timing with your ground pounds, and I mean, we've had lots of practice in this quest, so we're getting quite good at timing it right. The final world is here, and 8 Dash 1 contains lots of falling lava rocks from the sky. Basically, stay in the bottom portion of the stage and you'll be good. 8 Dash 2 takes place on this raft that stops if too many enemies are on top of it. As you know, killing enemies requires ground pounds, and that can get very hard to do when there are way too many enemies all at once. But thankfully, most of these enemies are running moles, and you can actually just go to the left of the raft to force them to run to their death in the lava. <laughs> Idiots! 8-3 has rising lava, forcing you to move those platforms with the correct timing to make it out alive. There are lots of floating beetles on the way, so you're never in any big trouble. 8-Dash Castle forces you to go up that elevator while dodging evil coins and other things that could stop it. Collect anything that could potentially touch the elevator and defeat any enemy that dares land on it and dodge the electric waves shot from those Bowser's heads and you'll reach the top easily. Welcome to 8-Dash Bowser, and in the first part you must dodge Bowser Jr's attack while moving right. Thankfully, you can actually get pushed by him and make your way to the end way faster. That's actually pretty cool. The first fight against Bowser is super easy. Simply run up the wall and jump on the switch and there you go. For the second part, it's a little bit more tricky. You have to wait for Junior to attack you and then hop aboard his Koopa Clown cart and attack Bowser from above. This is easy and all, but after you hit him, quickly move left or right to avoid Bowser hitting you when he hides in his shell, because the low gravity of being Mini Mario is actually a bad thing this time around. After 3 hits, well, you'll be done, and there we go, we save the princess. So, is it possible to beat new Super Mario Bros U while being Mini Mario at all time? Well, yes it is! Some levels and boss fights were made more difficult by being tiny and dying in one hit is never really fun, but besides that, this challenge was not that difficult. <laughs> The Super Mario Bros. series is full of lovely power-ups to use to make your quest easier. But there's one that doesn't really fit the mood, the Mini Mushroom. This tiny mushroom makes Mario super small and hard to see. In fact, I might actually need glasses. In addition to destroying my eyes, it also makes Mario super vulnerable to pretty much everything. Simple enemies like Goombas cannot even be defeated while you're Mini Mario, that's cringe. Along the years, I've played many games using this power up to see if it was actually possible to beat them, and today we'll go back to New Super Mario Bros. U 
but will attempt to beat the Superstar Road, aka the world you unlock after beating the game. The rules are simple. We are going to be playing the Superstar Road in New Super Mario Bros. U while being Mini Mario at all times. Obviously, being this tiny has a couple of changes to the way we play the game. First off, Mini Mario's low gravity makes us feel and move like we are on the moon. We also get killed by anything in one hit, so we'll have to be careful. Obviously, to get this quest going, I had to get a couple of mini mushrooms in stock, but the best way to do it is by going to World 2-4. There's one mini mushroom in the underground section over there, and if you finish the level with the last two digits of the time being 66, you know, like 266, 166, and 66, well, Toad will be more than happy to give you a mini mushroom. Now that everything has been set, make sure to subscribe to the channel right now so that you never miss a single new video, and let's just jump into it. Superstar Road 1 is the infamous spine coaster level that gave me lots of problems back when I was doing the without a coin challenge. See, this level takes place on a roller coaster moving at high speed and surrounded by evil fuzzies ready to one hit destroy you. You'll need to be jumping a lot to avoid those bad guys, and you'll also need to jump from one coaster to the next, but with the low gravity of Mini Mario, landing those jumps ends up becoming a pain in the butt. This fuzzy over there killed me once too many times, so I'm just warning you to be wary of that guy. Keep making those scary jumps and avoiding the fast enemies on your way, and you'll soon reach the flagpole. Superstar Road 2 is next, and in this one, you are meant to hit P-switches and quickly run on those blocks before they turn back into deadly coins and make you fall down to your doom. Timing is key in this level, and being Mini Mario makes it a little bit more challenging. First off, you must now do a ground pound attack to hit the P-switch instead of just walking over it, which is something that makes you lose a little bit of time, because you know, you have to wait for the animation to end and it takes a little bit. The low gravity jumping mechanic is slow, but will actually be quite helpful as you can now skip some blocks since you jump so high now. If you end up missing a P-switch, well you can often save yourself you know, by bouncing on those flying Koopa enemies over there, or by doing one-sided wall jump for this one over there. Turns out this level is made easier by being Mini Mario. Now this is epic. Superstar Road 3 takes place underwater, and this level is called Swim For Your Life. And as Mini Mario, you truly feel that title. In this level, a big cheap chump follows you and keeps trying to eat you, I can't blame the guy though, as Mini Mario does look like fish food. There's going to be some urchins and other enemies on your way, and sometimes you'll even need the cheap chump to clear those out for you, which makes this level really spooky and kind of tricky. Thankfully, by swimming up and down, you can avoid everything this level throws your way and make your way up the green pipe of victory over there and reach the flagpole. That one was a scary level, not gonna lie. Superstar Road 4 features an icy cave that is full of swinging hammers that you have to jump on to make your way through the stage. These hammers move slowly, and thankfully, the low gravity moon jumping ability becomes quite helpful and makes this level way easier than expected. Sure, there's gonna be those big and tiny icicles that you have to dodge on the way, but if you just pay attention to where you walk, where you jump, and where you basically move, well, you won't have a single problem making your way to the end. This level is actually quite easy. Superstar Road 5 is a very easy level to beat in this quest. In fact, I can't even go as far as to say this level is a complete joke. The low gravity of Mini Mario allows you to skip most of the stage and avoid any any hazards on the way. Just keep jumping on the spinning platforms, dodge the boos, and avoid anything that's on your path, and you will reach the flagpole easily. I actually cleared this one on my first try, so yeah, pretty proud of that. Sadly, Superstar Road 6 will not be as nice as the previous level. The fire bar cliff is up, and this level is full of giant spinning fire bars. They all destroy you in one single hit, so you'll need to avoid them at all cost. 
the problem in this stage is that you have to run quite fast to dodge those fire bars. But running as Mini Mario has a downside in this game. If you run fast, Mario will start running on the wall, and that includes walls that go down. So if you run, you'll sometimes just run off the ledge or just run into a fire bar, so that's quite dangerous. You'll need to be fast in this level, but you'll also need to stop holding the run button when approaching walls to avoid running off them. The first part is not that difficult to beat, but you'll soon reach the second one, which is a vertical level. Going up is quite difficult in this one and requires precise timing. This jump in particular took me a couple of tries, but eventually I managed to make my way up the stage and beat it as Mini Mario. Nice! Superstar Road 7 is called Lakitu Lakitu Lakitu. And those three words are exactly what I was screaming when those annoying dudes started throwing spinies at me. Guys, why do you hate me that much? What have I done to you? Why do you throw things at me? That's bullying! In addition to the evil Lakitus, you'll also have to watch out for those platforms on rails, as you can easily get stuck in between two and get crushed, and that's not cool, let's be real. Thankfully, by being careful and planning your jumps, you'll soon reach the flagpole and will be able to say goodbye to those evil Lakitus. Bye bye! Superstar Road 8 looks really scary. This castle is full of spiky pendulums that can very well make your life a nightmare if they touch you, so you'll have to be careful. But there's only a few pendulums that are true problems to this quest. These ones on the donut bridge over there are quite scary and will force you to do one heck of a precise jump to make your way underneath these two pendulums. But once that part is done, well the other parts are not as scary and difficult thankfully. And being Mini Mario actually allows you to stand on those donut platforms without them falling after a while, so it's actually a good thing. Welcome to Superstar Road 9, aka the final stop of the day, and this level is a total joke. I always found Superstar Road 9 to be a weird level, no matter what kind of challenge you attempt. The main idea is to kick a shell and follow it so that it clears out the coins, enemies and bricks in your path but you don't actually need to do any of that. You can simply move right, avoid everything, and reach the flagpole without ever playing the stage, which is kinda dumb, not gonna lie. Of course, being Mini Mario has absolutely no impact on this stage, so it will be cleared in no time. So, is it possible to beat the Superstar Road in New Super Mario Bros U while being Mini Mario at all times? Well, yes it is! I expected this quest to be more difficult than it ended up being, but alas, it was pretty easy to beat those 9 levels and very few actually made me scream in rage and pain, which is a good thing. When Mario eats a mushroom, he becomes bigger and stronger. The thing is, there's one power-up that does the complete opposite, the mini mushroom. This power-up, or power-down for that matter, makes you tiny, allowing you to enter secret pipes. But the downside is that everything now kills you in one hit. So you typically grab that mushroom to enter the secret tiny pipe to get the star coins or whatever, and then you quickly grab back another power-up to go back to your traditional size. But what if we try to beat new Super Luigi U while always being Mini Luigi? The rules are simple. We are going to try to beat new Super Luigi U while being Mini Luigi at all times. This does mean that we are not allowed to collect any power-up that changes back to a bigger sized version of Luigi. You know, like a mushroom, a fire flower, an acorn suit, a penguin suit, etc. Being Mini Luigi changes the gravity a little bit, making you floatier than when you're big Luigi. Defeating enemies also becomes a pain in the butt, as you can't simply jump on them anymore. You now have to do a ground pound attack if you want to hurt them. Now, getting a mini mushroom right from the get-go is not possible, obviously, as there's none in World 1-1. So we'll have to get our mini mushrooms in a later level. World 7-3 is actually a pretty good stage to get one. If you grab the flagpole in this stage with 66 seconds remaining on the timer, Toad will always give you a mini mushroom. Now that our inventory is full of sexy mini mushrooms, let's go back to the beginning and see if it's possible to beat the game as Mini Luigi. 
Here we go. World 1-1 starts off with tons of semi-solid platforms that move up and down. There's gonna be a couple of flying squirrel enemies that you'll have to dodge, but it's not gonna be really difficult. 1-2 takes place underground and features those plants coming out of the red pipes. Make your way around them and you'll quickly reach the end of this stage. 1-Dash Tower features lots of spinning gears and you'll have to find a way to fit in between all of those while dodging the evil fire bars moving all over the place. To be honest, this level is scarier looking than it actually is. Reaching the top will pit you against the mad lad Boom Boom and you'll have to use 3 well-timed ground pound attacks to defeat him. The timing can be tricky at first, but you'll eventually get it right. 1-3 is filled with rolling hills that make Luigi run faster than he usually does. This stage also contains lots of evil Monty moles that want to eat you alive, so you know, make sure to avoid them all. 1-4 is full of giant piranha plants and moving mushroom platforms, and the low gravity coming from being mini Luigi really doesn't help out. Take your time and avoid all of those hazards and victory will be yours. 1-5 is the first level in which we can see a mini pipe, so make sure to use it as it skips some parts of the level. There's gonna be more plants along the way, but this level is kind of easy. 1-Castle is full of swinging platforms, and I have to admit that the low gravity is really helpful in that situation. By doing tons of spin jumps, you never actually feel like you won't make the jump. This second part here usually wants you to hit a P-switch to transform those coins into walking platforms, but we can actually just spin jump above all of those evil munchers. The fight against Lemmy is kind of easy, as you can avoid all his bumps and even attack him before he gets the chance to throw them. 2-1 is home of spikes, and there's gonna be lots of them. In fact, avoiding their spiky boulders can be quite difficult when they're all around you. You'll have to be very careful. 2-2 contains lots of moving pillars that can crush you if you're not paying attention. There's also some evil pokies on the way, so make sure to avoid them as well. Oh, and there's also some moving spiky wheel enemies, so you'll want to watch out for those as well. Not gonna lie, this stage is tricky. 2-3 is a scary level that takes place in the dark, and as mini Luigi, you don't see a lot, so make sure to hit this block over there to get a yellow baby Yoshi. This little guy will allow you to see more of the stage and will even stun all of the enemies, making this stage a cakewalk. 2-Dash Tower contains those screws that you have to spin to make the platforms move up, and you'll really need to use some of those, as simply running up the wall to try to cheese it won't be possible this time around. The fight against the Mad Lad is super easy, and with that dude out of the way, we can now move on to the next stage. 2-4 has lots of those big face statues, and you can actually just run on them and skip them all if you just hold on right while running, making this level a complete joke. There's even a secret mini pipe that you can use to skip some parts of this level, so no stress. 2-5 contains more spikes that want to drop their boulders on your head from above. The thing is, with our low gravity and moon jump options, it is simple to jump above these guys and fool their evil plan. 2-6 contains more robots rolling hills, but this time around there's a lot of piranha plants on the way. Make sure you avoid those evil dudes and the flagpole will be right around the corner. 2-Dash Castle is full of lava and blocks that love to go hide inside of it. The low gravity of Mini Luigi actually makes this level a little bit annoying, but if you're being careful, you'll soon reach Morton. Go above his giant pokey and do 3 ground pounds and you'll be all good. 3-1 contains those water geysers that shoot Luigi up in the sky. Woo! Make sure not to get hit by the rocks that these crab enemies throw and you'll be good. 3-2 is our first underwater level and the only danger comes from those urchins that move up and down. You'll have to swim in between all of them if you want to make your way to the end. Thankfully, the cheap cheeps in this stage are the yellow types and these ones move out of your way so they won't be a problem at all. 3-Dash Tower is called the Shish Kebab Tower and with all of those giant skewers, I truly understand why. The low gravity is going to be your biggest enemy here as some of those skewers move so fast that reaching your destination before getting hit is really difficult. This jump here requires super precise timing. Thankfully, the fight against Boom Boom is as easy as it gets. Three ground pounds and he's done once again. 
3 Dash Sunken Ship is full of moving booze and you'll have to jump from one pole to another to make your way to the end. With all of those evil fishes in the water down there, you truly do not want to fall down in it. 3-3 features tons of water geysers and you'll actually need to land on them if you want to make your way to the end. While it is really tempting to just run and jump to the right to speedrun this stage, watch out as some of those geysers contain evil plants that will one hit KO you. 3-4 features even more geysers, but these one are THICK BOYS! So it's actually quite easy to reach the end and beat the stage. 3-5 takes place underwater, but this won't be as easy as last time, because now there's two giant dragon eels following you at all times. They obviously mistake Luigi for fish food, and that ain't cool. You'll need to hit the P-switch to turn these blocks into deadly coins and make your way to the next part. You'll need to avoid touching urchins and this will be easier said than done. 3 Dash Castle contains lots of bullet bills, so you'll need to bounce on them if you want to make your way to the second part. Speaking of, this part features King Bill, the biggest bullet bill you'll ever see in your life. Quickly jump from one platform to the next to reach the bus, and thankfully, this one is a piece of cake. 4-1 is a level where you need to climb to the top and there's gonna be a couple of evil bruisers along the way. Avoid the barrels that they punch at you and control your low gravity jumps on the note blocks and you'll reach the top in no time. 4-2 is full of sliding penguins and trust me, trying to kill those is way too scary and dangerous. Just jump up to avoid them at all costs. These guys are actually terrifying to deal with, not gonna lie. 4 Dash Tower is next, and this level is a total joke in this quest, as you can just run on the right side wall over there and make your way to the end of the stage. I actually never knew there was a hidden passage there. Who would have thought that I'd still be discovering things in those games in 2019? Oh, hey, here comes the mad lad, and he's gone. 4-3 does force you to do some precise jumps in between enemies and pits, but it's not the most difficult stage in this quest. 4-4 does feature banzai bills that you need to avoid, as well as some flying squirrels. And what? Who put an acorn down that slope? Dude, that's not cool. 4-5 is a stage where you would normally slide down using a penguin suit, but since we're not allowed to have one in this quest, I guess we're just going to run and slide our way to the end of the stage. To be honest, even without a penguin suit, this level is still really easy to beat. 4-Ghost House might have been a big problem during my without a coin challenge video a while back, but for this mini Luigi one, it's gonna be super easy. Simply jump from one box to the next while avoiding the booze, and that's it. 4 Dash Castle is ridiculously difficult near the beginning. Normally, you have to run super fast under those thwumps before they break the blocks underneath you, but we can't simply run as mini Luigi, cause if we do, he's just gonna run off the blocks and fall to his death. The low gravity of our jumps also makes this really tough, as we don't have a lot of time to move on before the thwumps break the blocks underneath us. It took me a couple of tries, but I eventually figured out that you can do some precise spin jumps underneath the thwumps and make your way to the other side that way. Don't put your guard down though, as there's more difficult jumps underneath thwumps along the way, including this last one that is also very spoopy, not gonna lie. What isn't scary at all is the boss fight against Wendy. Simply ground pound on her head three times and we'll be able to move on to the next level. Before reaching World 5, we have to make a quick stop in 5 Dash Airship and you'll have to avoid the many fire, ice, hammer and boomerang bros. Seriously, everyone is here. Time your jumps to avoid getting hit by them and this level will soon be done. The fight against Bowser Jr. is super easy and nothing really changes with Luigi being mini, so let's do this. In World 5-1, you'll swing from one vine to the next, and as you can see, letting go of a vine as mini Luigi really shoots us far to the right. It's pretty cool to be able to go so far ahead. 5-2 is a pretty easy stage as well. Basically, you'll want to jump on the many blocks on your path to reach the end. The low gravity of mini Luigi actually makes this level kind of easy. 5-3 contains... Ugh, 
Brambles. I hate those dudes so much. They always kill me in the dumbest way. Look! Again! <sighs> Thankfully, this stage is actually pretty short, and we won't have to deal with those annoying dudes for long. 5 Dash Tower is actually super easy. Stand on top of the snake blocks and avoid the rolling spiky ball wheel thingies and pendulums, and you'll soon reach the top. Boom Boom is bigger this time around, so it actually makes it easier for us to ground on him as Mini Luigi. So yeah, see ya Boom Boom. 5 Dash Ghost House does contain many boos moving all around the place, so this will force you to time your jumps and think before you jump, but you'll be good if you take your time. 5 Dash 4 is a level where you jump on pipes until you reach the ending. Watch out for the swinging blue pipes over there that contain evil piranha plants though, cause sometimes you're not expecting them and boom, you're dead. 5-5 usually takes place in a dark cave underwater, but did you know that you can actually skip the entire stage if you do a ground pound on this statue over there at the beginning? <laughs> With that epic gamer move, we can easily beat that stage in 20 seconds or less and move on to the next. 5-6 contains lots of sumo bros that like to kick platforms and create electric shock waves so make sure to avoid those things if you want to make it out alive. 5-7 contains evil poison water slowly making its way up to you, so you'll need to bounce on wigglers to make it to the top in one piece. It's not really that difficult to be honest. Speaking of not difficult things, here's 5 Dash castle a level in which you swing from the beginning to the end. No really, that's pretty much all you do. And remember how swinging basically shoots you all the way to the right? Well, it's also the case here, so reaching the bus will be ridiculously easy. And speaking of, this bus is kinda tricky, because you need to wait for him to come down and attack you before you can do a ground pound attack, but once you got that figured out, you'll be all good. 6-1 is full of fuzzies on rails, so all you need to do here is to time your jumps correctly to make it to the end. 6-2 is a pretty easy level. There's a porky puffer down there in the water, so you know just remain on top and you'll clear this one easily. 6 Dash Tower contains a couple of evil spiky wheel enemies and you'll need to dodge them to make your way to the top. It's a spooky tower, but it's not very difficult anyways. Guess what? The fight against Boom Boom is super easy. Who would have thought? 6-3 wants you to climb to the top of this vertical level full of tilting platforms and spikes throwing more dangerous boulders. Avoid those fishy boopkins and you'll be good. 6-4 takes place in a dark cave full of enemies. You'll have to stand on those moving light boxes to get to the top safe and sound. There are gonna be Koopa Troopas, Piranha Plants and Fire enemies that will try to prevent you from making it up there alive, so be extra careful. Don't forget to do ground pounds to get rid of the Koopa as fast as possible. 6-5 is not a very difficult level. Just watch out for those walking piranha plants as you never know when they'll decide to try to eat you. 6-Castle number 2 will feature more screws that you need to spin to make your way up the tower. You can run on the walls to skip this second part with all of the sumo bros and once you reach the big boss, defeating him will be quite easy. Just make sure to do a ground pound attack to damage him and you'll be done in no time. 6-7 is a level where you're supposed to hit those switches to move the platforms around and reach the end. Thankfully, the low gravity jump boost that we get from being Mini Luigi actually allows us to skip a couple of those switches, so finishing this stage is actually quicker that way. 6 Dash Castle also contains more switches and more moving platforms, but in this quest, you don't even have to hit a single one of them. Nope, you can actually make your way across the lava with some precise jumps. Pretty cool, eh? My boy Roy is annoying to deal with, because he constantly moves around the battle arena, so landing a ground pound attack is not very easy, but it is possible. 7-1 is another level with fuzzies, except this time you must use them as a platform, and to do so, you'll have to let those ice bros up there freeze them for you, because you cannot use an ice flower yourself while being mini Luigi. It is not a very difficult stage though, so no worries. 7 2 is super easy, and there's really not much to say about it. Bounce on the wigglers, and you'll reach the end quickly. 7 3 is the level where we get our mini mushrooms easily. You can just speedrun this stage as mini Luigi, because you can just run on the walls and skip most of the challenges this level has to offer. 
Let's replenish our mini mushroom inventory while we're here. Seven Dash Tower contains a lot of fire bros, and at one point, you're going to be on an elevator with two of them, dodge the fireballs and make your way to the top. The boss is Kamek this time around, and defeating him is not very difficult, as you can just chill on a block that's close to the top of the battle arena and do a ground pound on his face once he teleports near you. 7 Dash Ghost House is pretty easy, and all you're really going to have to watch out for are those fake question mark blocks. So just go under them and you'll be good. 7-4 features those bouncy clouds and if you do a ground pound on them, you'll fly so high in the sky that you'll basically skip the entire stage. 7-5 is also very easy as you can jump above most of the obstacles and reach the end in no time. 7-6 is an auto-scroller level taking place on snake blocks. Just avoid enemies and other hazards and everything's gonna be okay. 7 Dash Castle is next, and you'll need to jump above those big moving things, or else you will get crushed. Timing is actually super important in this stage. The battle against Ludwig isn't really hard or anything. 7 Dash Airship is a simple and easy level. You're actually meant to ride this cloud platform to reach the end while dodging the enemies along the way, but you can actually use those guys to bounce your way to the end of the stage without the use of the cloud platform at all. The second part does contain a lot of cannonballs and bombs, but by being careful, you'll soon reach Bowser Jr. To defeat the kid, wait for him to come down to attack you, or just go up his arm to do some good old ground pound attacks. 8-1 is actually pretty easy if you stay low and avoid going in the upper part of the screen, as there's lots of lava boulders falling from the sky. You're supposed to ride the lift and defeat the enemies that jump aboard it in 8-2, but killing enemies as mini Luigi is way too tedious, so at one point, I just completely gave up on it and made my way to the end of the level without the lift at all. It is actually possible because of the low gravity, so that's actually pretty nice. 8-3 has lots of gears in the lava, so make sure not to fall inside of one as you'll end up in the lava if you do. 8 Dash Castle is really easy. Hop on the platform and tilt your controller all the way to the right to quickly move to the end. 8 Dash Bowser is finally up, and the first part against Bowser Jr. is kind of easy. Just avoid his attacks, that's it. To defeat Bowser, just run to the left wall to make your way across with a jump and ground pound the switch, and there you go. The second phase is a little bit tricky though, as you have to wait for Junior to attack you and then hop aboard his Koopa Clown car. Attack Bowser with the flying thing, and as you fall out of it, quickly move left or right and do a ground pound to go down to avoid getting touched by Bowser's evil moving shell. Do this three times, and there we go. We did it. The princess is finally safe and sound. So, is it possible to beat new Super Luigi U as Mini Luigi? Yes, it is, and it's actually not difficult at all. Of all the Mini Mario Luigi challenges I've done so far, I think this one is the easiest of them all. And since the levels are so short in new Super Luigi U, well, this was done really fast. <laughs> Remember in 2013, when it was the year of Luigi? We got so many cool things to pay homage to the greatest green dude of all time. Yeah, I'm sorry Yoshi, maybe next year is gonna be yours. The year of Luigi also brought us a very big DLC for Wii U's new Super Mario Bros. U. This new game called New Super Luigi U features over 60 new levels where we play as our boy Lugi and we try to save the princess. And after saving her and collecting a bazillion star coins, we also unlock the Superstar Road, 9 secret levels for us to attempt. Well, today, we're going to be doing just that. Except, we're going to be playing those stage in a very different way. Most power-ups in this game are meant to make you more powerful. They make you fly, they give you fireball, they make you tall, etc. But there's one that actually makes your life way more difficult. The Mini Mushroom. Can we beat the Superstar Road in New Super Luigi U with only that power-up? The rules are simple. We are going to be playing the Superstar Road in New Super Luigi U while being Mini Luigi at all times. Being this tiny actually means there's going to be a couple of changes to the way we have to play these levels. First off, being this tiny switches the gravity and makes us feel like we are on the moon every time we jump. Look at that low gravity, I love it! 
anything also kills us in one single hit, which I don't love, so we'll have to be very careful. Now, to make sure I had enough mini mushrooms to complete this quest, I had to get quite a lot, and I did that by going to World 7-3 Rainbow Skywalk. Play this level quickly, and make sure to grab the flagpole when the timer shows 66 seconds. If you did it right, our boy Toad will be super happy to give you a mini mushroom. Now that our inventory is full of delicious mini mushrooms and that everything has been set, well make sure to subscribe to this channel because only 22% of you guys watching are actually subscribed. So to the other 78%, can I get you to hit that little sub button please? It helps me a lot. Alright, let's just jump into it. Superstar Road 1 is our first stage of the day, and this one takes place on a lot of moving skull coaster platforms, and you often have to jump off those platforms to land on other ones. One of the hardest jumps is the very first one over there, because the low gravity of the mini mushroom actually makes it super hard to land back on that coaster after you dodge the evil fuzzies, so you actually have to spin jump your way above this one and under those one to barely make it onto the second coaster platform. That is a very spooky jump, but thankfully it is possible to do. Keep jumping to avoid the evil fuzzies on your way and you'll soon reach the final coaster platform and we'll reach the top of the flagpole and that's pretty neat. Superstar Road 2 starts off with a blue P-switch that you need to hit to turn those blocks into coins, but doing so will also make the ceiling over there disappear and tons of very heavy metallic Bowser boxes will start falling on your head. You'll have to run super fast if you want to make it out alive, and let me tell you that the timing is very precise and you cannot afford one single mistake. Being Mini Luigi means you can now run on walls, but you can also run off walls, and doing so will probably mean death, so I suggest jumping whenever you can to avoid running on the walls. Once you reach the end of the first section, skip that P-switch as the big boxes will hit it for you when they fall onto it, and keep making your way on those platforms to reach the second part. It's very difficult, and I fell in the pit many times before actually discovering that the best way to reach them is to wall jump off the left wall over there to go back on top of the boxes. If you thought you were done, well I've got some bad news for you, as the second part contains even more boxes and some spinies on your way. <sighs> Touch all of those and keep running to reach the final section that is full of flying squirrel enemies. This part is very stressful, because you don't have a lot of time to react, and stopping is not really an option. Thankfully, as I was playing, I found another strat, which is kind of a cheat strat. If you do a triple jump here as Mini Luigi, well, you can make the blocks fall in front of you, and if you do that, well then all of a sudden this level becomes a total joke, as you just have to walk on those big blocks and you're not even threatened by anything. Yeah, this is kind of a cheap strat, but it works and, you know, I had to tell you guys. Just don't use it. Be brave. You can do it. Superstar Road 3 takes place underwater and features this big chungus fish over there that wants to eat Luigi probably mistaking it for fish food. I mean, take a good look. This Luigi booty kinda look tasty. Thankfully, this level is full of those pipes that blow air, which helps you out a lot to move to the right super fast before any fishes touch you. I say fishes because at the end, there's like a bazillion following you and that's pretty crazy. Swim fast, move in between the enemies and you'll soon reach the end and beat this one without a problem. Superstar Road 4 is next, and this vertical level wants you to jump on those swinging hammer platforms to make your way to the top of this tower. You'll have to keep moving and jumping to dodge the snowballs that these flip wrists send your way. Thankfully, being Mini Luigi means you're not heavy enough to make the donut platforms fall down, so this helps out a lot, as you can just walk on them like they're normal floor platforms. Most of the time, I was actually just chilling on those platforms instead of dealing with the swinging hammer ones, which actually made this level quite easy. Superstar Road 5 is called Under Construction, and this level actually builds itself as you play it. But to be honest, the low gravity of Mini Luigi is actually a blessing in this stage, as you don't even need to wait for the stage to be built. 
just run and jump super high and the level will build itself while you're just chilling off screen up above. I actually beat this stage on my first try and in less than 30 seconds, so that should tell you how easy it is. Turns out this level was super easy to give me a break before this next one. Superstar Road 6 is up and wow, I don't even know where to begin. This level is full of giant spinning, triple fire bars and you're meant to make your way in between all of those. Obviously, being mini Luigi means that these things kill you in one hit and more than once you'll have to sprint if you want to dodge them. This is way more difficult than it seems, because running as Mini Luigi also means he's going to run off the platforms to run on the sides of it, so you often need to jump instead of running, which completely ruins the timing. This part with all of the blocks is super difficult, and making your way to the other side of it only means you'll reach this part with even faster moving fire bars. If you decide to stop running to catch a break, well you won't even have enough speed to make it out alive, so you have to constantly keep sprinting, but the timing is super precise and probably not meant for the mini mushroom's low gravity. Thankfully, as I died over and over and over and over again, well I actually started to make progress and develop new strategies to make it further and further into the stage. One hour later, I managed to get this run going and I want you to take a good look at it because I'm actually quite proud. I dodged the first few fire bars by being careful, then I made my way across the evil block bridge and started running while bunking my head on the ceiling to slow me down when needed and I got through all of those fire bars alive and made it to the end. <sighs> Yay, this level was insanely difficult guys, you don't even know. Remember when I played the level that was under construction earlier? Well, welcome to its sequel, Superstar Road 7. Basically, this level is not even built and will never be. The way to beat it is to defeat some Lakitus to steal their clouds and fly your way across to the next Lakitu up until you reach the flagpole. Since being Mini Luigi makes you weaker, well you'll have to do some ground pound attacks to defeat the enemies to steal their clouds. It makes the timing a little bit tricky, but still possible. Getting the first and second Lakitu is quite easy because you have some blocks to stand on to make the switch from one cloud to the next, but for this last Lakitu, well you'll have to do the switch in midair, meaning you only get one shot, one opportunity. Mom spaghetti, so you know, don't miss it or else, well, this happens. When everything is done right, you'll be flying peacefully on your cloud to the end of the stage and you'll be done with it. Superstar Road 8 is next and this stage is full of big spiky pendulums that swing all over the place. You'll have to be careful as you make your way through this castle because these things will one hit kill you. The timing will be precise on some of those pendulums, but most of them are not very difficult to dodge and to be honest, this level isn't that hard, because the low gravity of Mini Luigi actually helps you move above those pendulums. Once you're out of the castle, do not let your guard down, because there's a couple more pendulums to deal with, but after that everything's gonna be fine. Welcome to Superstar Road 9, the final stop of the day, and this level wants you to hit one of those blocks to grab a super acorn and glide your way down to the end of the stage, but we won't be doing this today. Thankfully, this level is made super easy because of the low gravity of Mini Luigi. Doing a simple spin jump in midair will slow you down quite a lot, so dying is pretty much impossible if you stay in the upper section of the moving screen at all times. Keep pushing ZR on your controller and you'll soon reach this beautiful thank you wooden board. And turns out that being mini Luigi means your head won't fit in the hole and you won't be able to get a good ending picture. Oh well. So, is it possible to beat the superstar road in New Super Luigi U while being mini Luigi at all times? Well, yes it is. Some levels were made easier, some were made more difficult, and others were completely insane, but with a lot of practice, a lot of death, and a lot of mini mushrooms, I ended up beating all 9 levels of the secret world as mini Luigi.